Dr. Tikendranath Verma was born at Bilai in India. He received his Bachelor of Engineering degree in Mechanical Engineering with securing first division from Pandit Ravish Shankar Shukla University, Raipur in 2006. He did his master degree in thermal engineering in 2009 from the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Molana Azad National Institute of Technology, Bhopal. He has obtained his PhD degree from National Institute of Technology, Raipur. He joined Institute of Technology, Korba, as assistant professor in July 2013, September 2015. Later on, he joined National Institute of Technology, Manipur, as assistant professor in September 2015 to May 2020. Uh, May 2020, presently working as an assistant professor in a mechanical engineering department in Maulana Azad National Institute of Technology, Bhopal. He has three ongoing projects from the different funding agency like TQ3, Seed Grant and DST Manipur. He has published more than 160 research articles in a various national and international journal book chapter conference with high impact factor. His present citation is 1924. He has guided successfully six PhD candidates and 18 MTech candidates. He is, he is organized program as a convener, organizing secretary for different FDP workshop seminar. He has four patents granted and filled seven patents in India and Australia. He also serves as a guest editor for environmental science and pollution research, Ranger materials today processing under Elsevier and the lecture notes in a mechanical engineering under LNME Stranger. He is also an editor for Elsevier book title Vegetable <coughs> Oil Volume 1 Biofuel Technology and Volume 2 Future of Different Seed Seed. Apart from the academic, he played and won a uh, Indo-Nepal International Tennis Ball Cricket Match and Series 2016-17 to played five times National Tennis Ball Cricket Champion of the Year 2011, 12, 15, 16, and 17, three times awarded Kale Shikar Swarna Alankaran by Chhattisgarh government in 2011, 12, and 2015. And I am proud to say, like, I done my MTech project under the supervision of the Verma sir in 2020. Uh, warm welcome for you, sir. Thank you, Abhishek. Okay. So PPT is visible to everyone. Abhishek, PPT is visible, eh? Not visible, sir. No, sir, not visible, sir. It's visible now? Not no, now, sir. Now, obviously, or still it is not visible? Still it is not visible, sir. I think uh, screen sharing is not on, sir. Screen sharing. But it is written, uh, you are sharing your screen here. Okay, sir. Now, Abhishek? Not no, sir. Head. It's no, not visible, sir. 
it's a just blank is uh, and that's showing tinganath barma is sharing to share contents just but not no abhishek you just uh, check your whatsapp i have sent the ppt if it is possible yes. open from your end also no problem okay sir shall i stop from here yes sir uh So my my voice is clear, na? Yes, sir. Voice is clear, sir. Okay, okay. Just check. I have sent you in WhatsApp. Yes, sir. टिकेंद्रनाथ सर वर्मा सर हेलो सभी सर एक बार फिर से ट्राई कीजिए तो सर शेयर करने का मैं पांथो ही से बात किया हूं वो फिर से वो कह रहा है कि आपको वो प्रेजेंटर बनाया है हो सकता है आप शेयर कर पाए सेम कन, सेम इशू आ रहा है अच्छा पांथो जी थोड़ा देखिए मेरे एंड से तो हो गया यू आर शेयरिंग योर पावर पॉइंट पंथो जी तानी सर आपका कौन सा विंडोज है सर सर आपका ये एप्पल है क्या सर का पता नहीं चल रहा है लगता है मुझे मेल कर रहा वो कर रहे हैं मैं देखता हूँ व्हाट्सएप मुझे शेयर करने के लिए बोल रहा है हेलो ऐसा टेक्निकल इशू सो जस्ट वी सॉल्व राइट ना सर टिकेन नाथ वर्मा सर सर सो कैन आई शेयर योर पीपीटी सर श्योर आई हैव ऑलरेडी सेंड टू अभिषेक यू जस्ट ओपन फ्रॉम योर एंड आल्सो नो प्रॉब्लम ओके सर Yes, sir. I have sent to the sir, sir. I think uh, sir is the post, and sir can the open the slides, sir. Sir, may I take another moment, sir? Please, uh, for your sharing, yeah. Take it, sir. Ha ha, sir. Close your sharing. Okay. stop sharing then i share hmm stop yeah it's a visible sir it hello sabindra kachap is starting to share content but uh, ppt is not visible it's visible sir now it's visible sir tikanand barma sir hmm Yeah, visible or not? No, PPT is not visible. Your screen, like Sabindra Kachap, is starting to share content. Just written like uh, some some sir, uh, uh, some issue is there with the systems. Might be. So it's uh, visible on 
all other slides sir like all other participants yes sir it's visible sir so i think sir in the kendra sir's uh, system some uh, okay i'll, I'll better na first main leave karta hu then i'll join again yes sir okay. try the and uh, testing and method means uh, some photos related to gcms then ftir same images it is there and conclusion is a general conclusion next so the increase in energy consumption particularly in the past several decades has raised fears of exhausting vital natural resources so rapid industrialization and massive growth in population has increased the dependence and use of natural fuels so approximately 90% of our energy requirements are met by this fossil fuels so studies suggested that if exploited at the same rate the coal reserve will deplete in the next 200 to 300 years and petroleum deposits will deplete in the next few decades so it is important for us to engage in research and development of alternative fuels as we may not face scarcity of natural resources in the future so india is the sixth ranked in terms of energy demands but its domestic crude oil satisfies only one fourth of the our current demands so greenhouse gas emission and global warming is also in the forefront of critical issue so india is currently facing energy crisis with its major dependency on coal crude oil imports to meet sharply growing energy needs of the country so what are the causes why india is facing problem like energy crisis so demand is more than supply and this is the main cause of present power crisis during the five years plan stress was given on the development of industries but to cope up with the industrial development equal stress was not given on the development of power so most of the power station of india are of thermal origin next slide abhishek next slide hello so sir, this slide is the... yeah slide is changed sir yeah yeah okay so these are the sources of energy some in this slide is advantage and disadvantage just like every coin has two sides similarly uh, this renewable and non renewable energy sources of some have advantages and disadvantages also so in renewable energy it is uh, useful energy that is collected from uh, renewable resources which are naturally replenished on a human time scale including carbon neutral sources like sunlight wind rain tides waves and geothermal heat also so the term often also encompasses biomass as well whose carbon neutral status is under debate so this type of energy source stands in contrast to fossil fuels which are being used far more quickly than they are being replenished so this renewable energy provides energy in four important areas like electricity generation air and water heating cooling transportation and rural energy services so based on the uh, four years there is one report renewable contributed 19.3% to humans global energy consumption and 25 around 25% to their generation of electricity in 2015 and 16 respectively so this energy consumption is divided as 8.9% coming from traditional biomass 
4.2 percent as heat energy that is our modern biomass geothermal and uh, solar heat then 3.9 percent from hydroelectricity and the remaining is 2.2 percent is electricity from wind solar geothermal and other forms of biomass so these renewable energy systems are rapidly becoming more efficient and cheaper and their share of total energy consumption is increasing in the next two three slides we can see the uh, patent also how it is increasing in renewable energy area so this renewable energy systems are rapidly becoming more efficient and cheaper as of more than two-third of worldwide newly installed electricity capacity was renewable and growth in consumption of coal and oil could end by maybe in near future so all the national level at least 30 nations around the world already have renewable energy contributing more than 20 percent of energy supply so national renewable energy markets are projected to continue to grow strongly in the coming decade and beyond also so at least we know that this uh, two countries iceland and norway generate all their electricity using renewable energy and many other countries have the set a goal to reach 100 percent renewable energy in the future so at least 47 nations around the world already have over 50 percent of electricity from renewable resources hello yes sir just change the slide hello yes sir okay so this renewable energy resources exist over wide geographical areas in contrast to fossil fuel which are concentrated in a limited number of countries so rapid deployment of renewable energy and energy efficiency technology is resulting in significant energy security climate change mitigation and economic benefits so in international public opinion survey there is a strong support for promoting renewable sources such as solar power wind power and other also so with many renewable energy projects are large scale renewable technologies are also suited to rural and remote areas and developing countries where energy is often crucial in human development so as most of renewable energy technologies provide electricity renewable energy deployment is often applied in conjunction with further electrification which has several benefits electricity can be converted into heat and it can be converted into mechanical energy with high efficiency and is clean at the point of consumption in addition electrification with renewable energy is more efficient and therefore leads to uh, significant reduction in primary energy requirements in the other hand if we talk about non-renewable resources that is also called the finite resources so it is a natural resource that cannot be readily replaced by natural means at a quick enough pace to keep up with consumption so an example is carbon-based fossil fuel the original organic matter with the add of heat and pressure becomes a fuel such as oil or gas so earth minerals and metal ores fossil fuels like coal petroleum and natural gas and groundwater in certain aquifer are all considered non-renewable resources so resources such as timber and wind are considered renewable resources largely because their localized replenishment can occur within time frames meaningful to humans as well so natural resources such as coal petroleum and natural gas take thousands of years to form naturally and cannot be replaced as fast as they are being consumed so eventually it is considered that fossil fuel based 
resources will become too costly to harvest and humanity will need to shift its reliance to other sources of energy such as solar or wind power and alternative hypothesis is that carbon based fuel is virtually inexhaustible in human terms if one includes all sources of carbon based energy such as methane hydrates on a sea floor which are vastly greater than all other carbon based fossil fuel resource combined so these sources of carbon are also considered non renewable although their rate of formation replenishment on the sea floor is not known so however their extraction at economically viable cost and rates has yet to be determined so at present the main energy source used by human is non renewable fossil fuels since the dawn of ic engine technologies in the 19th century petroleum and other fossil fuel have remained in continual demand so as a result conventional infrastructure and transport system which are fitted to combustion engine remain prominent throughout the globe and the modern day fossil fuel economy is widely criticized for its lack of renewability as well as being a contributor to climate change so as you can see in this uh, um, graph this uh, the peak will come around 20 to 50 2050 all this natural gas coal and oil are in the peak so that it is expected that the reserve will sharply decline after 2050 so majority of the oil reserve were utilized in transport sector please change the slide change sir so there are several types of resource depletion please go to back uh, previous slide so the most known being is aquifer depletion then there is a deforestation then mining of fossil fuel and minerals pollution or contaminants of resources soil erosion and over consumption we can say excessive or unnecessary use of resources so resource depletion is the consumption of a resource faster than it can be replenished so natural resources are commonly divided between renewable resources and non renewable resources so use of either of these forms of resources beyond their rate of replacement is considered to be resource depletion so the value of a resource is a direct result of its availability in natural and the cost of extracting the resource the more a resource is depleted the more the value of resource increases there are several types of resource depletions as we discussed in this resource depletion is the most commonly used in reference to farming fishing uh, water usage then mining and uh, consumption of fossil fuel so this depletion of wildlife population is called defoundation so at first glance sustainability and mineral resource development appear to be in conflict but uh, in mining depletes finite resources and in a strict sense is unsustainable so for instant there is only a finite amount of copper in the earth crust and each unit of evidence suggests that addition to reserve through discovery and technologies change have more than offset reductions through depletion of existing mines over the last several decades next slide so in the challenges concerning depletion 
go to next slide so in the first point to develop a better uh, scientific basis for discussion of the adequacy of mineral resources so in this you know previous slide so an important need is to develop a better methodology for characterizing sub marginal mineral resources that is those you know previous previous slide those that are not exploitable under current economic condition with uh, known technologies yes this one that is uh, but which could become economically feasible under different conditions so another need is to understand the mineralogical barrier the fact that mineral and metal resources occurs not only in the several distinct ranges of enrichment or concentration but also in different chemical states so recovery becomes dramatically more difficult as we move from one mineralogical to another so details on this concentration ranges are very incomplete and hence we know little about this aspect of our mineral resource inventory then in the second point to develop better data on factors involved in mineral supply that should be used in public policy analysis and decision making so in this an important need is better data on annual changes in mineral reserves both addition and reduction so a related need is better data on how the discovery and development of mineral resources occurs over time for example historical discovery rates and the factors that influence discover rates and information on where additional reserve come from so these type of data are necessary inputs to ongoing efforts to incorporate resource depletion into the national income and product accounts just a second no?
हाँ सब जी तो मेरे तो कोई और भी कंट्रोल कर रहा है क्या ये म्यूट क्यों हो जा रहा बार में अच्छा चलो सो इन द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड मोस्ट पॉपुलर रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी सोर्स सो इन दैट यू हैव सीन दिस सोलर एनर्जी विंड एनर्जी हाइड्रो पावर टाइडल एनर्जी जियोथर्मल बायोमास वेव एनर्जी तो वी कैन डिस्कस ओनली टू थ्री दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट सो इन द सोलर एनर्जी देर इज अ फ्रेंच साइंटिस्ट एडमंड डिस्कवर्ड द फोटोवेल्टिक इफेक्ट वाइल एक्सपेरिमेंटिंग विथ अ सेल मेड ऑफ मेटल इलेक्ट्रोड्स इन अ कंडक्टिंग सोल्यूशन he noted that the cell produced more electricity when it is was exposed to light so in the solar energy the radiant light and heat from the sun that has been harnessed by humans since ancient times using a range of ever evolving technologies solar radiation along with secondary solar resources sorry nikki you already commented account for most of the but, uh, sorry, available renewable energy on earth so this energy from the sun that is converted into thermal or electrical energy and it can harness this energy for a variety of uses including general generating uh, electricity providing light or a comfortable interior environment and heating water and domestic commercial and industrial also so there are some disadvantage also for this solar power is pollution free no greenhouse gases to be emitted after installation so these are the some uh, basic advantages then if we go to wind energy so it is a form of solar energy it describe the process by which wind is used to generate electricity wind turbines convert the kinetic energy in the wind into mechanical power and a generator can convert mechanical power into electricity so the term wind energy and wind power both describe the process by which the wind is used to generate mechanical power or electricity so this mechanical power can be used for specific task or a generator can convert this mechanical power into electricity so china is the world leader in wind energy with over a third of the world capacity it boasts the world largest onshore wind farm in uh, gansu province which currently has a capacity of 7965 megawatt five times larger than its nearest rival so when mechanical energy enhances a unit by harnessing wind power it may be a called a windmill wind pump or wind charger it can be used for anything from power on boats battery charging or electricity to being used commercially then there is a biomass so biomass is energy generated or produced by living or once living organism so the most common biomass material used for energy are plants such as corn and soy the energy from this organism can be burned to create heat or converted into electricity so this feedstock include dedicated energy crops agricultural crops forestry residue algae wood processing residue municipal waste and uh, wet waste then there is a lot of examples so biomass is considered a renewable energy source because its inherent energy comes from the sun and because it can regrow in a relatively short time trees take an carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and convert into biomass and when they die it is released back into the atmosphere some people are asking why biomass energy is bad so biomass is far from clean burning biomass creates air pollution that causes a sweeping array of health harms from asthma attacks to cancer to heart attacks so this results in emergency room visit 
then hospitalization and premature death also so the production of this biomass plants is incredibly expensive and in some cases the costs are not worth the benefits so transport and resource gathering expenses are high and will be continually needed every day so when you compare the process of biomass energy to fossil fuel you find that the cost is actually much higher and there is a one common disadvantage of biomass energy is the amount of space that it requires and this biomass energy is not entirely clean some greenhouse gases are still produced then geothermal so it is the heat that comes from the subsurface of the earth it is contained in the rocks and fluids beneath the earth crust and can be found as far down to the earth's hot molten rock that is uh, we can say magma also so people can capture geothermal energy through geothermal power plants which uses heat from deep inside the earth to generate steam to make electricity this geothermal heat pumps which tap into heat close to the earth's surface to heat water or provide heat for buildings so hot water near the earth surface is piped into buildings for heat and a district heating system provides heat for most of the building in uh, iceland so industrial application of geothermal energy includes food dehydration that is called also drying gold mining and uh, we can say milk pasteurizing so in this potential emissions greenhouse gas below earth surface can potentially migrated to the surface and into the atmosphere surface instability construction of geothermal power plants can affect the stability of land also then we can say simple example is our geyser so geyser is a example of a geothermal energy hot springs lava and fumaroles are natural example of geothermal energy geothermal power is currently more common in homes and businesses so using geothermal heat pumps to control the temperature in the building there is a one more ocean thermal energy so that is proposed by in 1880s by the french engineer uh, arsenal his idea called for the closed cycle system a design that has been adopted for most present day that's it otec pilot plants so no need to go in that then wave energy it is there so wave energy is the transport and capture of energy that uh, by ocean surface waves so the energy captured is then used for all different kinds of useful work including electricity generation water desalination and pumping of water so the wave power is produced by the up and down motion of floating device placed on the surface of the ocean in other words wind produces waves and then waves produce energy so as the waves travels across the ocean high tech device capture the natural movements of ocean currents and the flow swells to generate power so wave energy also known as ocean wave energy is another type of ocean based renewable energy source that use the power of the wave to generate electricity unlike tidal energy which uses the ebb and flow of the tides wave energy uses the vertical movement of the surface water that produce tidal waves and wave energy is unique because it is the most concentrated form of renewable energy on earth with power density much higher than that wind and solar energy so as waves can travel for hundreds and even thousands of kilometer with virtually no loss of energy they act as an energy reservoir charged by the wind then there is a hydropower so hydroelectricity energy also called hydro 
hydro uh, electric power or hydroelectricity is a form of energy that harnesses that the power of water in motion such as water flowing over a waterfall to generate electricity hydropower plants can generate power to the grid immediately they provide essential backup power during major electricity or disruption also so in addition to a sustainable fuel source hydropower effort produce a number of benefits such as flood control irrigation and water supply so it is the most efficient way to generate electricity so in this this hydropower is completely renewable which means it will never run out unless the water stops flowing it is a emission free reliable adjustable create lakes impact on fish also so more than 150 countries produce some hydroelectricity although around 50% of all hydropower is produced by just four countries that is china brazil canada and us so china is the by far the largest hydropower producer on the planet so why it is bad sometimes we can say it is bad also so it can impact water quality and flow so hydropower plants can cause low dissolved oxygen levels in the water so this problem that is harmful to repression habitants and it it is addressed using uh, various aeration techniques which oxygenate the water next slide abhishek next slide yes so you can see in this uh, renewable energy patent activity in this slide so it is increasing day by day up to 2016 the data it is there after that it is uh, not available so in this you can see the differentiate between this ocean energy heat pumps geothermal energy then fuel from waste biofuels bioenergy hydropower so this patent indicator shows that renewable energy technology has experienced significant innovation in the recent years so renewable energy patents have grown at a rate above 10% per year since 1995 next slide so this accelerating the energy transformation through innovation so innovation has to be beyond traditional energy technology and r&d so innovation policy frameworks will need to have a balanced focus between support for technologies and far uh, areas beyond technology so innovation is needed in sectors where decarbonization options are limited to find the solutions needed to mitigate the remaining re emissions the sectors with the lowest progressive in innovation for decarbonization such as heavy industry as well as freight transport and aviation are those where proper policy incentives and long term perspective are lacking so in industry it is the production of energy intensive commodities that processes the main challenge like cement making and the production of chemicals and petrochemicals such as nitrogen fertilizers plastics and synthetic fibers then in the second accelerating this is specially true for technologies that are more expensive than their conventional counterparts so one instrument to improve the economic viability of technologies and correct for market distortion is a carbon price so in transport national emission policies and regulations are aimed at achieving domestic goals and can improve the cost competitiveness of some costly technologies and increases their deployment 
so market instrument such as correcting for harmful effect of fossil fuels from air pollutant externalities that are not priced that are also important so sectors such as freight and aviation have non technical barriers to emission reduction cross border regulation to jet fuels in aviation and bunkers fuels for maritime transport has yet to be addressed then there is a two data the integration of variable renewable has been enabled by flexibility options such as grid in reinforcement so in this the optimal strategy for integrating share of higher than 50% on annual basis by 2050 is not yet known so integrating high share of renewable requires innovation in all components of the energy system including new system operations innovation market design and regulation so out of the box business model and the enabling infrastructure next slide so why we are moving to the alternate fuel what is the need of alternate fuel you can see in this slide it is fast depletion of fossil fuel then there is a green house gas emission local production of alternate fuels meeting the demands in the global energy and increase in economy of the nation through omission in imports next slide so these are the major challenges when we are using this alternate fuels climate change then depletion of fossil resources air pollutions and if we take this major constraint to be considered while discussing biodiesel as a feasible fuel includes performance that is efficiency acceleration top speed and co2 emission then infrastructure investment required to update existing infrastructure and build a new one standard then total cost of ownership retain maintenance before going to the next slide uh, just i want to uh, include why we use this alternative fuels suppose if we uh, first point is environmental damage So this fossil fuel emissions from vehicle damage the environment and contribute to air pollution. So several major environmental problems are caused by the use of fossil fuel. So global warming, oil spills, acid rain, air pollution, then health threat of fossil fuel use. So one by one, just small we can discuss this global warming, also uh, known as a greenhouse. effect it is caused by accumulation of carbon dioxide emission that uh, do not leave the earth lower atmosphere so co2 is the gas responsible for keeping the earth climate warm because it absorb radiation that would so the greenhouse effect the unnatural accumulation of co2 in the lower atmosphere is forming a thick blanket that is preventing the second part of natural process this uv rays leaving the earth atmosphere from occurring the uv rays traveling from the sun are able to penetrate the co2 blanket and arrive the earth surface but they are unable to penetrate co2 blanket after they are radiated back up from the earth surface then there is a oil spill so an oil spill is a major environmental disaster and it occurs when oil tanker transporting oil to shore from an ocean based oil rig sinks and the oil cargo is released into the ocean so an oil spill 
can also occur when oil rig located in the ocean accidentally we can say leaks or uh, explodes it is also important to note that when an oil spill occurs on water it is extremely difficult to prevent the oil from spreading so it is also important possible to clean up an oil spill that occurs in water pollution to ocean is extensive and countless fish other valuable and beautiful forms of marine life and coastal lines are uh, affected so this oil spill may not appear to be a major threat to the environment because they normally occurs in very remote areas so the oil that is released into the ocean from an oil spill spread very far and affects large areas of ocean life so eventually the oil reaches coastal land and destroy the animal and plant life that are part of the coast coastal system oil we know that it is a toxic and poisonous substance it is important to remember that oil is retrieved from deep below earth surface and it is not mean to uh, to be exposed directly to the environment because human animal and plant life plus the natural functioning of the atmosphere they are not adopted to deal with the chemical composition of fossil fuel so another type of oil, oil spill can occur when a land based oil pipelines burst or leaks nowadays unfortunately oil spills occurs too frequently then there is a acid rain so this is an after effect of the use of oil and coal so when oil or coal is burned through combustion in an engine sulfur contained in the oil is released through the emission of the combustion and produces gaseous sulfur dioxide so the amount of oil and coal used each day around the world produces a large quantity of sulfur as a result of the fuel combustion that takes place so even though the sulfur content of fossil fuel is so low millions of tons of sulfur are released into the air each year due to the heavy use of fossil fuel so globally sulfur dioxide emissions are about 100 million tons annually and are increasing due to sudden third world industrialization so due to complex chemical reaction that takes place in the atmosphere sulfur dioxide is transferred into sulfuric acid and nitrogen oxide is transferred into nitric acid so polluted precipitation in acid rich and is collected in groundwater and released into rivers lakes and oceans so not only does secondary pollution contaminate water on earth it also cause other harm to the environment such as destruction of valuable forest and contaminants human grown crops then there is air pollution also pollution can be defined as anything that causes a, a reduction in purity therefore uh, air pollution can be defined as the reduction in purity of the air so most of the earth air pollution is caused directly as a result of emission fossil fuels so the process of combustion releases gases and minute particles into the air all lives on earth depends on air for the basic uh, respiratory process plants animals and human all depends on the balanced amount of the gases like oxygen water vapor and carbon dioxide so since the gases and particles released from fossil fuel emissions are not naturally present in the air and therefore is not compatible with the basic respiratory process that all forms of life have developed over millions of years so when foreign substances are introduced into the air it is obvious that the natural balance of life on earth will be affected as the respiration process of all life on the planet are not adopted of these pollutant gases so gases released from fossil fuel emission that causes the greenhouse gas uh, effect or also polluting the air carbon dioxide nitrogen oxide and methane the three most prevalent greenhouse gases are also responsible for lowering the uh, quality of the air that we breathe then particulate matter 
although not a greenhouse gas it is also an air pollutant released from fossil fuel emissions ozone is the gas that is created in the atmosphere by reaction between several of the gases released from fossil fuels emissions and it is considered a pollutant because it is a powerful irritant to the human respiratory system next slide so these are the some emission and emission norms as i told ki uh, uh, this is related to bs4 and bs6 norms bharat stage 4 bharat stage 5 bharat stage 6 so now we are in uh, bs6 norms abhishek please change the slide yes next one one more see in this slide uh, we can see uh, okay please please stop so in this slide we can see uh, as i told bs6 and now we are in bsc bharat stage 6 bharat stage 6 or bharat stage bs norm is similar to european norms which are called euro and bharat stage 6 which is it is already applied in 1st april in 2020 uh, the major difference between bs3 4 and 6 the uh, emission norms is released to sulfur particles from exhaust gases so if we take example for bs3 if we take for petrol and diesel so in bs3 the sulfur particles is 150 mg per kg but in diesel it's around 350 mg per kg when we are in bs3 then bs4 this both petrol and diesel is 50 50 mg per kg and now in bs6 now uh, it is all it is already going on so in that petrol and diesel only 10 mg per kg sulfur particles are there so bs5 we have already skipped uh, first this bs norms is applied in ncr and 13 cities like uh, ncr national capital region delhi and 13 cities uh, like mumbai kolkata chennai pune bangalore agra ahmedabad surat kanpur lucknow sholapur jamshedpur and hyderabad so first uh, after that uh, this bs norm supplied in the throughout the uh, country so what is the effect in automobile sector when uh, we are moving to bs4 to bs6 so bs6 means more research and development for manufacturer and hence it increases the cost of production so it might results in reduction in demand for the products and discontinuation of the existing product so maybe manufacturer don't invest in the existing engine to achieve bs6 norms because the investment cost is high so they will prefer to make a new engine to introduce in the market which is fulfill the norms of as per bs6 so maybe petrol car increases are expected to go up to in the range of 10 to 20000 and when we go for diesel so it will take around 80 to 1 lakh so with increased cost of production the price will also be increased and the consumer will have to pay more money to buy such products the fuel will also be refined accordingly and it will again put more burden on the pockets of the consumer so what will happen if fuel is bs4 and vehicle is bs6 or we can say fuel is bs6 and vehicle is bs4 so sulfur content in bs4 fuel petrol for diesel and diesel for 50 uh, mg per kg so in petrol engine the effect is very less but in diesel engine the effect is more so reason the diesel is injected in combustion chamber through injector and sulfur helps for proper lubrication in injector so in bs4 sulfur content in 
uh, is 50 milligram per kg and in BS6 sulfur content is 10 milligram per kg. So therefore uh, lubrication is not proper in the injector due to sulfur content is less which is in uh, BS4 fuel. So that injector is not proper functioning and in long term results are like reduce the mileage then high maintenance cost and high emission level and life of injector is also less. In the second, if the fuel is BS4 and vehicle is BS6, so maybe it will affect immediately because lots of changes in the engine of BS6 like injector, electronic system and other also. So it will give results low engine power, again same, uh, high maintenance cost and reduced mileage. Immediate effect we can say it is in diesel filter will uh, block or cloth in faster due to the higher sulfur content. So the problem is we are blindly adopted European standard. The only change we uh, change the name Bharat Street. So we can say if we compare the norms, so speed of the vehicle is important parameter. We have to reduce the average speed in Euro norms. Uh, an average speed, speed of is uh, around 120 km per hour. But in the BS norms is worked on an average speed of uh, 90 km per hour. So the problem is to achieve the average speed until or unless if we don't achieve the average speed, the PM is not burned out. So average we know that ki, uh, jo hamara, any vehicles will come in the market after 70,000 km minimum. Automobile sector requires two weeks and it is not related to vehicle. What about our refineries? They will reduce the sulfur content. Our vehicle is not reduced the sulfur content. Next slide. Uh, I think we have discussed this topic. Just next slide. So this is the method for biodiesel production, well-known method, transferification. And there is a chemical reaction. This is defined as the process in which non-edible oil is allowed to chemically react with alcohol. And in this uh, reaction, methanol and ethanol are the most commonly used alcohols because of their low cost and uh, availability. This reaction has been widely used to reduce the viscosity. Basically, we are reducing the viscosity of uh, a non-edible oil and uh, for the conversion of triglycerin into ester. So transterification can be carried out in two ways, catalytic transterification and non-catalytic transterification. Just change the slide. So in this uh, biodiesel category, I have categorized in uh, five different ways, edible biodiesel, then non-edible biodiesel, animal fats, waste oil, and alcohol-based biodiesel, that is butanol, ethanol, propanol, uh, methanol, and pentanol. So uh, I have shown in the, uh, I think, five to six slide, there is some result related to these uh, five categories and uh, some properties also it is given for all this coconut palm red seeds soya bean and sunflower next slide so these types of biofuel this biofuel alcohols hydrogen natural gas electricity and uh, propane we can discuss one by one please change the slide so biofuels basically uh, from the natural gas found in the plants and uh, uh, organic matter. Ethanol is the main biofuel used uh, nowadays. It is made from an alcohol derivative that is obtained from the cooking and uh, fermenting process of grain, usually corn. Most ethanol available is called E85 and it is a combination of 85% ethanol and 15% uh, of gasoline. 
so old uh, ford torus manufactured after 1998 that is compatible with e85 then next is please change ethanol and methanol that is alcohol alcohol type change the slide so this alcohol ethanol and methanol alcohol type of fuels is alternative to petroleum based fuel due to reduced greenhouse gas emission toxic exhaust emission and enhancement of overall energy efficiency moreover they are convenient for uh, ic engine that is our internal combustion engine due to their high octane rating burning velocities and wider flammability limits so in order to achieve better environmental sustainability it is the right time to use lower molecular weight alcohols to replace other additives as octane booster in automotive fuels in the present situation next hydrogen so in this uh, it is an energy source for vehicle is still being developed but is extremely promising hydrogen is a gas that can be uh, created through electrolysis the process of combining water and oxygen so hydrogen is not only clean it is also a renewable energy source and there is a no fear of its depletion also so in a vehicle powered by hydrogen hydrogen fuel cells are contained in the vehicle and are replenished with hydrogen just as gasoline is replenished into a tank of a traditional vehicle so consumer may even be uh, able to fill up at home if an appliance that generate hydrogen is developed so that it is small enough and safe enough to store in our garage so no distribution system currently exist for hydrogen as a vehicular fuel source this is because hydrogen powered vehicles are not being marketed to consumer at this time next so natural gas is considered to be an alternative energy source because it is a preferable alternative to oil we can say why is natural gas is considered to be an alternative fuel why it is not a fossil fuel so you are right because uh, natural gas is a fossil fuel but it is different from gasoline or we can say petroleum and coal because it does not contain the same harmful compounds found in other fossil fuels unlike gasoline petroleum and coal natural gas has a negligible sulfur dioxide content and it does not contain lead also so it has a uh, low nitrogen dioxide content a low particulate content and a low carbon monoxide content so natural gas does not require carcinogenic additives to boost octane levels because natural gas is naturally high in octane in addition natural gas is still abundantly available which means that is it is practical to rely on its continued supply for hundreds of years into the future also however uh, it is not renewable which means that supply although plentiful at this time will eventually to be depleted that is why it is important to develop other sources of alternative fuel also next so in this electricity is used to power vehicles by an electric motor the electricity is provided to the vehicle by batteries that uh, stores electricity these batteries are recharged every day normally in the evening hours when the vehicle is not being used the owner of an electric vehicle must uh, recharge the vehicle from uh, home using a small recharging station because no infrastructure uh, currently for recharging stations exist only uh, one state that is uh, california has set up recharging station in some areas therefore evs cannot be used for traveling long distance as there are difficulty in locating recharging stations then next
Propane, we know that this also known as a LPG is a byproduct of processing of natural gas and uh, crude oil. It is wisely used for alternative fuel for cooking, heating and vehicle applications. Next. So biofuels generation and types, you can see this first generation obtained from vegetable crops. Uh, fats from vegetables and uh, animals so first generation biofuels are directly related to a biomass that is generally edible next then second generation biofuels are defined as fuel produced from a wide array of different feedstock ranging from uh, uh, lignocellus feedstock to municipal solid waste. So you can see the uh, categories, edible oils and non-edible oils, products, problems, what are the benefits. Next. So third generation that is obtained from algae and it, it can be commercialized as uh, algae oil. So. Third generation biofuels are at this point related to algal biomass, but could a certain extent be linked to utilization of a CO2 as a feedstock. So it can be easily grown in sewage and industrial pollutants. The biodiesel yield is more than traditional crops and the end algal biomass is a good source of feed to animals also. Next. So biodiesel, basically it is a form of diesel that fuel derived from plants or animals and consisting of long chain fatty acid esters. So it is typically made by chemically uh, reacting lipids such as animal fats, soybean oil or some other vegetable oil with an alcohol producing a methyl, ethyl or propyl ester. A clean burning alternative fuel for diesel engine produced from domestic renewable resources such as vegetable oils like soybean oil or uh, animal fat. So biodiesel are considerable renewable energies and it emit less than fossil fuel and have received increasing attention in the transition to a low carbon economy. Bioethanol, biodiesel and biogas are types of biofuels. So bioethanol, basically it is the uh, most well-known biofuel and it is an alcohol produced from corn, potatoes, sugar cane and others also. It is commonly blended with gasoline. Uh, however, plants grown specifically for any type of biofuel are not ideal due to the energy required environmental impacts and emission associated with harvest and transport. So ethanol is a complicated issue, but overall is helping ease demand on fossil fuel. Brazil and US are the biggest exporter and consumer of uh, ethanol. Then if we go to biogas, so it is created by a byproduct of decomposing plant and animal waste in the environment with low levels of uh, oxygen. Uh, we can say waste treatment facilities and uh, dairies. So biogas is made up primarily of uh, methane and uh, carbon dioxide. Thus the natural incentives are strong to keep biogas from entering the atmosphere. So in practice, biogas is not captured and uh, used as much as it is should be despite being used for centuries. So it can be used for transportation, cooking and electricity. It will play an increasing role in the transition to a low carbon economy due to its ability to capture potent greenhouse gas emission, reduce waste and all while creating energy from a byproduct of other activity. Next slide. So in this, we can see what are the advantages when we are uh, uh, using this biodiesel. You can see clearly from uh, gasoline, this uh, greenhouse up to more than 120. But, but when we are using this B100, it is less than 30. So 
so the exhaust gases are less harmful to the environment by producing less hc hydrocarbon carbon monoxide and particulate matter so very less modification when we are using this uh, blending in diesel with blended so very less modification is required for the use of biodiesel in any existing diesel engine next so this is the commercial application of biodiesel so in this uh, india's first biofuel uh, powered flight that aims to reduce cost of air travel by replacing the costly aviation turbine fuel was successfully tested a uh, 72 seater spice jet aircraft partially powered by biojet fuel it took from uh, dehradun and landed at the delhi airport and the duration of the flight was around 25 minutes next so now this uh, results is related to uh, some gcms ftir sem which was done by uh, one of my candidate in manipur next next slide so gcms is extensively used for the analysis of these compounds which includes ester fatty acids alcohols aldehydes terpenes and other also it is also uh, used to detect the major contaminants for spoilage or adulteration which may be harmful and which is often controlled by the uh, governmental uh, agencies like for example pesticides then there is a ftir and sem images is also there so sem is uh, scanning electron microscope and it is focused electron beam over a surface to create an image the electrons in the beam interact with the sample that is producing various signals that can be used to obtain information about the surface topography and the composition then if you talk about the ftir so ftir is a fourier transform infrared spectroscopy it is also known as ftir uh, it is basically an analytical technique used uh, to identify organic polymeric and in some cases inorganic material also the ftir analysis method uses infrared light to scan test sample and observe uh, chemical properties next there is some edx also red one so this energy dispersive x ray spectroscopy it is an analytical technique in which uh, the elemental analysis or chemical characterization of a sample the number of x ray uh, emitted from the specimen can be measured by an energy dispersive spectrometer next slide next slide there is a one uh, one more x ray uh, x ray power diffraction that is our uh, xrd so in xrd it is a rapid uh, analytical technique primarily used for phase identification of a crystalline material and can provide information or unit cell dimension the analyzed material is finally ground homogenized and average bulk composition is determined in the xrd next so this is the line diagram of gcms gas chromatography mass spectrometer as i told ki these compounds which include ester fatty acid peaks we have to check from this uh, uh, instrument next this is ftir which is fourier transfer infrared spectrometry and it detects the spectral peaks of the composition within the synthesized biofuel next
so when we check this properties like your uh, CTN number, flash point, poor point. So some standard we have to follow. ASTM, American Society of Testing and Material. So these are the some properties which we have found when we do this uh, experimental work. If we talk about this property like your CTN number, uh, flash point and poor point. So basically poor point is uh, the temperature below which the liquid does losses its flow characteristics in uh, crude oil uh, high pore point is generally associated with the high paraffins content typically found in crude deriving from a, a larger proportion of plant material then c10 number i think we all know it plays a similar role for diesel as a uh, octane rating and c10 uh, rating is also known as c10 number it is a measurement of quality or performance of diesel fuel. So the higher the number, the better the fuel burns within the engine of a vehicle. So in other words, it is how minimize the delay is between when the fuel is injected into the chamber and when the combustion begins. And there is a flash point. It is a general indication of the flammability or combustibility of a liquid. Next. So there is a one, uh, I think, conclusion slide, uh, that one. This is a general conclusion. The alternate source of energy are eco-friendly and less harmful to the environment as compared to conventional fuels. The level of air pollution may also be reduced by using this alternate fuels. And the present scenario of global warming can also be reduced by using this alternate energy sources. Throughout the year, these resources are available without affecting the environment. These steps can help in conserving natural resources. Thank you for your patience. If any doubt, you can drop a message in chat box. Any questions, then please. Dear participant, any question from Dr. Tigan Abdurma, sir? I think no question uh, from the audience, sir. Okay. Or if anyone have any doubt, then you can drop a mail or message. You can take my email from the website also. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sabin. Thank you, sir. So, please, uh, uh, Abhishek, please wind up the session. Yes, sir. On behalf of all the coordinators, myself and participant, for sparing a time for your busy schedule and provide a valuable information for us. In all the technical issues, you have delivered a valuable lecture for us. I would like to extend a Sincere thanks from our side for Dr. Tikendra Nath, sir. Thank you, sir. And like in all the technical issues, you have made myself and my participant an opportunity for listening a valuable lecture. Thank you for Dr. Sabinda, sir. And uh, participant, I share the feedback form. Just wait for one minute in 